Good morning. It's actually like noon, so afternoon. But rather than spending the rest of my lunch break on my phone, I'm gonna take advantage of the fact that I live in a really walkable part of town and I have two clothing items that are ripped. They've already been sitting around for a bit, so I'm like, hey, I'm just gonna walk to the tailor and ask them how much it'll be to get my ripped clothing repaired. One of them is in fact my 1989 cardigan, which came like split at the seams everywhere, but there was a whole side panel of it that just came undone, question mark. So I tried to get a refund on this and they were like, <clears throat> so I have this and a skirt in my car that both need repairs. I'm gonna go take a walk and do that now and you can't see me because my camera is like, you're back lit, ho. Later. Good evening, my AirPods broke, turns out the limit of the amount of times that you can put AirPods in the dryer is one, and then they break. I took my Friday afternoon nap, which as always was spectacular. And when I woke up, the whole building outside my window was like glazed pink and orange. And I was like, oh, I'm missing a really good sunset right now. The sky is so pretty and it's cold. I don't know if you can hear me because the wind. All right, oh, hot. Okay, don't touch the oven. I'm balls deep in making dinner right now. I'm making the healthiest of all concoctions, which is chicken tetrazzini. There's no better Americanized thing than Italian food. Now we strain, which is exactly how I felt on my jog earlier tonight. And thus we have a pound of whole wheat spaghetti. When I'm on it, should I? You're gonna get that steam ASMR over there if you don't mind. Anyway, people said they liked my cooking clips. So here's a cooking clip. Clip number one is I'm too lazy to mix this all together in a bowl, so I'm raw dogging it directly into my baking dish. But the recipe here is a can of cream of chicken soup. Also, if you don't have one of these, Bonnie, my best friend, got me this in a set of spatulas for Christmas, and it's life changing. You use it to scoop out cans. Nothing goes to waste. Do I need to spray this? You know what, that's probably why they want you to do it in a different bowl. Okay, hold on. I've been humbled, that's fine. Can of cream of chicken. <laughs> Should Americans be consuming food that is that texture? Probably not. And again, if y'all are gonna question the fact that I went for a jog tonight, but then I'm having processed mega cheese pasta carb dinner, to that I say, do I contradict myself? Very well that I contradict myself. I am large and I contain multitudes. You also need a cabinet mushroom. <laughs> Yuck. Okay, then after your condensed soups, you're gonna need sour cream. How much sour cream, like a shit ton? Yeah, girl, two cups. <laughs> How much is two cups? I have a pound of sour cream and I don't use this for anything else. Should I just do this whole thing? Tell me why the Willy Wonka soundtrack is actually so good. The entire movie was good, let's be honest. I just don't like, have y'all seen that uh, Reese Witherspoon speech where she's like, you can tell when a man has written a movie because every time there's drama, the, a girl will go, what do we do now? And that has ruined me because while I was watching Willy Wonka, all I could think about was the amount of times that Noodle was going, what do we do, Willy? Sour cream simultaneously smells so good and so bad. I mean, I'm not even convinced that I like sour cream, but then every time I eat it to tell myself like it's fine, it just tastes like yogurt. Like that's just like plain sour yogurt. That is so much sour cream. Jetzt was. Half a cup of melted butter. Unsalted because I'm healthy. Just kidding, it was the only one that I have. Will a microwavable bowl please step forward? Oh, there's a cat hair on the butter, of course there is. A tablespoon of salt. A tablespoon? Teaspoon, Jesus. That sounds like a hefty pinch. I an olive garden employee right now. More? More? Dude, fresh cracked black pepper smells so good. Garlic powder. How much? That much? Okay. One thing about me, I'm not gonna measure it. My mom hates that about me, especially when it comes to baking. I'm not gonna measure it if I'm baking. I mean, flour and sugar, probably. Spices? <laughs> I think I know what a tablespoon is. Okay, don't lose me here, but then we're gonna do frozen peas. This says half a cup, but that feels like not a lot. I'm gonna up it to a cup. I'm not a pussy, I can deal with some peas in my food. Actually, it doesn't look like that much. Now we got peas. Oh, I forgot to put the butter, hee <laughs> hee. All right, butter going in. 
Now we do our chicken. I elected to do it in a stovetop thing and not shred it in the crock pot. We'll see if I regret that. Oh, I was supposed to stir all the sauces before I added everything. This is all, it's going in the same thing. What the hell? This is so much sour cream. The texture of this would make a 50s housewife so happy. You know how they put stuff in gelatin all the time? I'm making someone's grandma proud. Okay, after that we do one pound of thin spaghetti. The only thing thinner than the spaghetti is me. <coughs> Period. All right, this has been sitting here, so now it's all one clump of noodles. We love that. Okay, so let me try and stir a clump of spaghetti with sauces. This is gonna be my personal hell. How am I getting my ass beat by sour cream based spaghetti right now? Okay, well that looks good enough and I'm also too lazy to keep doing that. Shit, I didn't preheat the oven. This is what happens to an air fryer girl when she has to use her oven again. Okay, baking sheet, olive oil spray. If this is gonna gross you out, don't look. Oh God, I missed a lot of spots. And it's all clumped in the spoon. <laughs> All right, now that she's comfortable in her pan. Yeah, are you comfortable in your pan? Okay. One and a half cups of mozzarella and half a cup of cheddar. I can do that. Also, Parmesan. My logic is that about a handful is half a cup. So that's one. Dude, I love sharp cheddar. If I had one love of my life, if I was a Greek god, sharp cheddar is my ambrosia. You know, it would be even better, extra sharp cheddar. <laughs> Okay, the oven's not done preheating, so I'm gonna clean up and put everything away really slowly until it is. Oh, I forgot, I'm also gonna make a side salad. I have a lot of Caesar dressing left over. <gasps> Parmesan! <laughs> I got it. Oh my god, that is so much cheese. <laughs> Listen, the cheese has to distract from the amount of sour cream. Did I get everything? Now I'm scared. Do you ever do that? Oh no! There was supposed to be chicken broth. It's too late. If we've already put the cheese on top, it's too far gone. <sighs> Whatever. Did anyone die? No. Cover with foil and bake for 30 minutes. It's already cooked. 30 minutes? I'm not built for the casserole lifestyle. I'm sorry. All y'all are going in the sink now. Two hours later. Okay, here's how we turned out. Shelby was on FaceTime, so I didn't record me eating, but my review is that I think it needed the chicken broth. It was very forward on the sour cream, so I think when I reheat it, I'll just put some broth in and then stir it, and then it will make it better. Also, I added ranch seasoning to it because it was fine, but it was just like chicken flavored and I needed a little something extra, so that put it over the top. I'm in a phase where I don't think I'm gonna eat all of this at one point, so I'm gonna go ahead and portion some to put in the freezer. Hello? Excuse me. Can I sit there? I wanna sit there, please. Planner check-in. I don't think I've gone over my planner stuff with you. I honestly don't really like this planner. It's the Panda brand. And it does a lot about affirmation of the day, focus of the day, I'm grateful for, which I know is good for mental health, but I'm like, don't care to do that every single day. We don't have time for that. I mainly just use this for the tasks and then it does have an exercise section, a priority section, a schedule section, and then there's a wins section and how I'll improve. So I like that, but not a big fan of this. I'm just gonna keep using it until I'm done, which is gonna be a couple more years. The things I have left to do today are cleaning my bathroom. Uh, I started editing a vlog. I'd love to keep editing it, but that's always my reward at the end of the night because I like doing that. So it's like a little treat. Oh, I have to put my laundry away. So I should probably do that right now. There's a couple books on my TBR cart that I need to put away. And then I put organized calendar, which I just think means putting my work calendar on my Apple calendar. Cause when people ask me when I'm free, I have to cross check like three calendars and that's been annoying. So doing that, but I went for my walk tonight, so crossing that off. I also was able to stay off my phone for most of the day, so crossing that off. And then I planned all my business travels, so crossing that off. Real quick before I start cleaning, I did buy these Almond Joy bars at Aldi and I wanna try one. These honestly look like, these might be, you know the food that's like next to the pharmacy at Walmart because it's like meant for diabetic people? It kind of gives me that vibe, so maybe this is not meant for the common consumer. Tastes like an Almond Joy. Candy bars, now available at Aldi. <laughs> okay, I had a bite of it. I'm gonna do chores and then have the rest as a reward. Hey, do Sorry, 
the best song of all time by Taylor Swift, other than Style Taylor's version just came on. Who? Your ex friend's sister. One thing I started doing is sitting down to fold laundry. For so long, it was like something I put off because I was like, I'm tired, I don't want to stand up. Girl, then sit down doing it. In the same way that I started sitting for when I have a million dishes because it hurts my back because I'm tall, I'm allowing myself that accommodation. I like doing chores on Friday nights because then I feel like I wake up in the morning on the weekend and my life is together and I can spend the whole day doing nothing. Also Monday and Fridays are kind of my productive days since I also work from home those days. I can get stuff done for work while also getting stuff done for my house. So like I run my dishwasher on Mondays and Fridays, I do my laundry on Mondays and Fridays. Oh hi Gordo! So yeah, like the past three days, I have not even cracked open a book. I definitely could have had moments where I did and I chose not to, but it's not bringing me joy right now. So I'm not gonna force it. And I know that I'm just trying to read a book that I've already read that I don't like. So it's especially difficult. Also, this is my Arrows Tour hoodie and I have purposefully been very sparingly washing this because the inside of it is so soft and I don't want it to go to like the fleece not softness after you've washed it too many times and it's starting to not be that soft anymore. I bought this in like a 4 or 5X so it would be super cozy. Yeah, it's a 4X. It is my favorite thing I own. It is so comfy and it's such a luxury as a huge person to find something that's actually oversized. I have a lot of t-shirts that I'm keeping, like all my Harry Styles t-shirts that I got whenever I went to his tour, I got in the biggest size and they are still like form fitting. So I literally have them in a drawer to like wear someday. I could wear them now. I just don't find them that flattering. So they're like a save for later when they can be like a bag t-shirt instead. It's still so strange to me to not get any reading done whatsoever. The benefit of having the audience that I have is my focus is not find new subscribers and bring them to the channel. It is just like deliver to the people that I have. And if that attracts new people, then great. And the advantage of that is the people who are here and come back every week are so nice. And they're like, do whatever you want and we'll watch it. And that is so freeing. And like the highest compliment, people who say like, you could do anything and we would watch it or like your videos feel like a FaceTime call. I genuinely do this as a side hobby and it can be really difficult to do that when a lot of people who do it now do it for money and it's their full-time job. And how can you compete with someone who reads like 150 books a year and has the time and money to dedicate all their energy toward it? Oh my God, it's my favorite shirt of all time. So I've just stopped competing. <laughs> I know it's not really even technically a competition, so that's the semantics of that might be off, but I do my thing and let them do theirs. Oh my God. I wore this shirt to meet Tahara last year and she laughed at it. The Ignite Me girlies understand. Sasha and I have matching shirts of this, so shout out to Sasha. Anyway, what was I saying? I just don't give a shit whether or not people like what I do, because I'll do it anyway. <laughs> One of my goals this year was to get into YouTube shorts, which, Google is pushing like hell. If I'm gonna be honest, I hate the YouTube algorithm for advertising and for shorts. I get AI ads all the time and like Andrew Tate ads and political stuff that I don't align with. I'm like, I don't know who you think I am, but it's not this person. And that kind of translates to shorts. I feel like I get, you know when you start a TikTok for the first time or like you log in after a while or you end up on a side of TikTok of things that you don't care about and you're like, why am I getting this? That's so corny. That's how I feel every time I go on YouTube shorts. And I'm like, how do you know nothing about me as a user? That being said, I've always wanted to start doing it because it is a way to reach new people. I think I can even make revenue from short so if I have something go viral just like a book recommendation video that would be cool. I just have such a lack of confidence in making short form content especially TikTok. I've purposefully stayed off of TikTok because I live in fear of cringe okay that's the honest truth. I know that I'm a fat person. I know that the internet hates fat people. I think it would just open up another avenue of scrutiny because like I said when I go to YouTube 99% of the people who are gonna see this are people who I know love and trust. You guys. If I then start cross posting to TikTok I can already anticipate the negativity 
negativity, but I don't know. Should I even be anticipating negativity? Is that something I need to work on? All that going back to, I still kind of want to try. I've noticed it's really easy to carry the phone around and co do content on your phone versus carrying a camera around, so the appeal of it is nicer. I just don't know what kind of things to do on vertical short form video, but it's my goal for this year, so if you see it pop up, I guess that's why I'm mentioning it, is this is my warning. If you're like, why is she spamming YouTube shorts? I just want to see. I'm curious. I feel like the sit down video style is so dead, which is kind of sad, and maybe it's not. I just don't do what people <laughs> are looking for. I did my favorite books of the year video and it didn't do as well as I thought it would. I did a sit down video talking about my favorite romance books and that did not do well. I mean do well is comparative. I still am really happy for whatever views I get but compared to my vlogs they do not get as many views. Very interesting to me and the video that I put like zero effort into which is just getting rid of a lot of my old books did do well. So it's just crazy how things that you don't think about take off and have a mind of their own versus the things you really try might not. <sighs> I'm just being Ed Sheeran over here thinking out loud. Okay, well that concludes my folding. Now I have to go get my hangers. I'm sure this vlog's already long enough. You don't want to hear me ramble even more. All right, I'm done with volunteering. It was a pretty busy day, so I didn't get to record a whole lot of me working, but a lot of taking in donations, going through them. One person dropped off a bunch of current fiction books. My mom said she was running low on thrillers, so I picked up like $6 worth of books. So I got just a bunch of random mysteries. She doesn't care what they're about, if they're best-selling authors. So I just found her a bunch of women who write stuff. Then also Leanne Moriarty, and then this other one just says it's like a psychological suspense. So I picked those up for her. See if she'll like them. In the YA section, I kept seeing the spine and it was so cute. I'm not buying books right now, so I really shouldn't have, but this looks so cute. It's called The Heart of a Samurai and it's set in the 1840s. It looks like a graphic novel, but it's not. But there are pictures. I don't know. It just seemed very interesting. It's a Newberry Honor book. Now I have to go get my car inspected and get an oil change, but I really don't want to. We'll see if I do that. Hello! You mind if I do a mukbang? By that I mean I'm just gonna sit here and talk to you while I have my lunch. That's just what a mukbang is, okay. For lunch today we've got leftover salad and leftover tetrazzini. And the plot twist of the entire 20th century, 21st century. I read a little bit today. I was sitting, getting my car inspected, which I know I would have put off if I didn't do today. You know, the lovely gentleman took about an hour to do my car, which means I got in an hour of reading. So this is the first time we're gonna talk about a book in this video, hi. I'm currently reading the first Crescent City book. Does anyone actually call them their titles? Cause they're so dumb, I just call it Crescent City. <laughs> I'm rereading it and remember absolutely Nothing. It's like I'm reading this book for the first time genuinely and then I went back and looked at my review to figure out why and I realized I read it in April of 2020 so other things were on my mind probably and I'm not loving it I, I mean I keep complaining to everyone like it's so boring the whole plot line is like this main character's best friend is murdered and so they're like working with all these people to figure out who did it a couple years later but the night that it happened the main character was like partying and drunk and high that's a really small detail but the whole tone of the book is that the entire town looks down on her as like a slut and a partier and like you deserved what's happening to you i can't believe you let that happen and so everyone's mad at her and she's already like not processing her own grief so this book is so complicated and overwind overwinded long-winded but i got to a part of the book where she really has to come face to face with what happened and every time that those scenes happen i think it's actually written really well i don't know something about guilt maybe it's the christian in me that sees a book about a guilty girl and i'm like ha 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 again it has moments of being emotionally compelling alongside a lot of what the hell is going on so i got to a really good part i laughed i almost cried sitting in the tiny waiting room among like four other men it was it's, i think it's getting to a good part but i'm still i think my kindle says i have like seven hours left of the book so we'll be here a bit longer 
I'm really this annoying girl. Also, I have friendship bracelets on. I brought my other Taylor Swift water bottle to my volunteering and my tote bag is Taylor Swift, so. Yeah, I'm enjoying the book, eh, eh? But it's so fucking slow, dude. And by the time I get to where I am, it's taken me like two or three weeks to read as far as I am into the book. And the plot line of this faction of people did this on this night and these people need this artifact because of this reason, but these people are looking for this. There's so much plot to keep track of. I should have taken notes because I'm rereading this book to be able to read the other one so I remember what happened. I already don't remember what even the point of this book is. It's just so difficult to get through. On top of the fact that I've spent my days the way I have, trying to get my life together instead of just focusing on sitting. Which actually, sitting is not a required element of reading. I haven't watched it yet, but I saw my good friend Sarah from Sarah with Without an H just posted a video where she can only be reading in this vlog if she's also walking, which I think is an interesting concept. So maybe that's gonna be my iPad kid watch as I finish my lunch. But I only have about 20 minutes and then my mom and I are gonna go do some errands as well. <sighs> Good news, I touched my Kindle today. I'm gonna buy it. It was that good. Sorry, we're jamming to the music. I feel like I'm on that Six Flags ride, the Looney Tunes one, where it's like pew, 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 pew. <laughs> Second Amendment rights when you're going over the hill. <laughs> Weirdly specific <laughs> reference there. I don't know if I can relate. You've never been on the Bugs Bunny ride? Not since I was like, hey. Thank you. That's crazy. It wasn't my favorite ride in college. We're in the room at six at Half Price Bugs. Oh, can I make a book recommendation? Of course. Business or pleasure. I'm so turned on right now. I can't. <laughs> Business or pleasure by Rachel and Solomon. It is about a ghost writer and she ends up having a one night stand with this guy. Turns out he's <gasps> a. And he was terrible. And he was terrible. I remember this one. Yes. Okay. And it turns out that he is an actor in like an old TV show. And he's going around to all these Comic Con things. And she ends up having to ghostwrite his book. And while the, she's ghostwriting his book, she's like, By the way, you're really bad in bed. And he was like, You want to help teach me? And she's like, Maybe. On the scale of one to five, like, what's the I chili give it pepper? five stars. No, oh, like on the chili, chili pepper, pepper scale. I mean, like, they have a lot of. Sex. It uses it uses, okay. it uses the word cock and pussy. <laughs> but like just punched myself in the face. That's how happy about that I was. But is it kinky? No. Okay, that's fine. So you know, it's three and a half, four. I want to get this one, but it wouldn't match my set. Also, I'm not buying books right now. Why are you here? Because I'm getting money for books right now. Oh, I'm buying books. I I've read this and I'm buying it because it was that good. And then I'm buying her other book, The X Talk. Oh yes, my favorite romance book of all time. <laughs> Fault in our Tom stars. Porn. It's an erotica. <laughs> Literally. In the Nora Roberts section, no less. You get some sick beats. Up in Sorry, I'm zooming in on Akamath past you. Definitely. Actually, I, I really liked that first book in that series, so I'm tempted, but I won't. Guitar? No, the Bone Shop and whatever, the straight guy oh, writing lesbian romance. Yeah. It's available on audiobook through my library, so. That's pretty cute. Like, I wouldn't, I don't think I'd own it, but I really liked it. Okay, I'm home from meeting Shelby at the bookstore. Kittens are enjoying their dinner. I have about 20 minutes of sunlight left, so I'm gonna go get in a walk. And then when I get home, I need to eat. And then unload my dishwasher. I might actually get to read tonight. Oh my God. Also, feeling quite proud of myself because usually on weekends, I am not getting out of bed. So the fact that I've been out of bed since nine today is crazy. Also, I'm just gonna pull a page from Sarah's book and I'm gonna bring my Kindle on my walk and do that as I'm on the go. Okay, no more talking. Let's go walk. So I knew it was chilly today, but it's actually cold as balls. I can't feel my fingers. I'm trying to read. This is not fun. I'm gonna do a short loop back to my apartment. I'm gonna face a different fear because I have not used my apartment building's gym, specifically the treadmills, in a while. Several months ago, I actually fell off the treadmill because it was like skipping and not working right. My suspicion is I might be over the weight limit for it. I have no idea. I'm gonna go try that again. Maybe they fixed it. Maybe I'm still over the weight limit, but I still wanna walk and I like reading and walking. 
good morning i don't think i recorded it all yesterday i really spent the whole day cleaning like look how okay it doesn't look that great but i like mopped my floor my kitchen's all done and then the second half of the day i did a workout inside and did like a taylor swift dance class which was hard but fun i read my book and surprise surprise i finished my book which i remember when i first started rereading crescent city i was like why the hell does anyone like this especially compared to akatar i'm like i don't understand how the general populace of readers who only read every now and then actually get into that book because it's so difficult it is so info dumpy at the beginning and difficult to stick with like even me who was rereading it. And that's another thing is, even though I was rereading it, I remembered absolutely, no it was like I was reading the book for the first time. Every single plot twist was new to me. I remember when I was reading it, I was like, there's no way this book is getting more than two stars when I was at the beginning. I am feeling a little bit forgiving because I did end up in a place where I was absolutely could not put it down. Like Shelby and Bonnie were FaceTiming me and I was just ignoring them on the phone because I was like, what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? And then I ended up finishing it at like 1 a.m. I do have book two out from the library right now and immediately book two started with a prologue from some character that we've never heard of and I've heard that there's perspectives added in this one. <laughs> God gives his toughest battles to his bravest soldiers. Because the reason I do not like Throne of Glass, I mean, it's fine. Calm down. The reason why I didn't even read the conclusion to that series is because I just did not care about the character soup that Sarah J. Mass does. I only care about the main character. And I'm really dreading if there's going to be like three or four perspectives in this book because one, it's like 900 pages, wrap it up. And I'm only getting through this one to get to the third one because that's all I care about. That's the only reason I'm rereading book one and also reading this one. It took me like a month to read the first one. I think I enjoyed it marginally better than I did last time. It still gives me fourth wing vibes of, it's a fantasy world, but they speak very cringily. It's not, as bad as fourth wing but still she's like calling him alpha hole and Ugh. i mean i guess that's the good news of this vlog is i read a book also i slept with my ac off last night or i guess my heater off last night and i slept with my windows open and i woke up and my apartment was 57 degrees so i had the best sleep of all time last night it's truly cruel to make me work but unfortunately i must slay so i'm about to lead my meeting and then probably at lunch i'll take a break and do some more reading it does not feel like monday i just need a vacation i think i'm gonna have a really busy first half of the year hopefully not even a second half too i have things planned for like every weekend in april the weekend after easter i have a work trip the weekend after that is the solar eclipse i'm hosting a friend in texas because we're in the eclipse line the weekend after the eclipse i have another work meeting the weekend after that is warner's birthday like i'm booked i'm really not used to having plans ever so this is me growing into adulthood i think i have to practice being the host of this meeting hey guys good morning good morning did you guys have a good week weekend when all i want to talk about is taylor swift and the book i just read which speaking of i'm not sure what star rating i'm gonna give it because part of me still i can't stop thinking about how bad the first half is it is so long-winded she does write it in a way where it's like this happened because this connects to this but it's such a circuitous route to get to any kind of answers and it is like a mystery of solving why this girl's best friend died and you solve it like five times and then it's like haha that was wrong so by the end it just feels repetitive because it's like chase bad guy fight with your boyfriend think that you're right but then you're wrong someone betrays them oh they're getting chased by bad people i still don't fully understand the world i see what she's doing being like there's portals between worlds and there's different universes blah, blah, blah. but even the world that's just in crescent city they live in crescent city which is part of midgard which is ruled by pangira which has these star heroes that watch over it and there's a war happening there and everyone hates humans but you're never in the human world even though the main character is half human so you don't really care about the humans because you don't have any reason to like them whatever i'm really not in the mood for it to be a work week okay well it's been real it's been fun time to go girl boss mm -hmm. 